Hey, what's up, guys? Our special guest today is an Ohio State Buckeye. Ooh, O-H. A YouTuber. He is the Pond Guy, Greg Woodstock. Welcome back to the show, Greg. Hey, thanks for having me again, buddy. Absolutely. He just got off stage at Launch Purdue yeah. Academy Live. How did it go? Well, first of all, I'm just super impressed. This is my second year here. Brian just asked me like six weeks, hey, can you come back? I'm like, yes, I will, because I was so impressed last year with it. It's just fun. I mean, you have 350 guys that are wanting to get better with their businesses. Like, I, I always enjoy talking to people like that that are trying to get to that next level. And of course, the greatest satisfaction in life is helping someone else reach their fullest potential. So that's why I come out and do these things. Maybe I can have one wisdom and nugget after 31 years of doing this that would help somebody succeed. What year did you start on YouTube? Vlogging was 2018. YouTube was, I think, 2008 or 2009 just for Aquascape Inc. Corporate. Mm -hmm. When we built a pond for Logan Paul, I'm like, jeez, I'm building a pond for one of like the top YouTubers. I should start this vlogging and thing. And he was in his prime. That was, he was like the hottest thing on YouTube when you guys were there. He literally was. And a good guy to this day. He's a good guy. He, he's, a, he's a shock jock, so he does a lot of things. So basically, Logan Paul's video was my fifth one. I started right before I did his because I'm like, I'm going to be doing it with him. And uh, that was a thousand videos ago for me, a thousand vlogs ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Three I watched that one. Yeah, yeah. It was so good. Yeah, Keith Kalfas was there. Uh, Stanley Genetic, Dirt Monkey University was there. Blake. Blake's, yep, yeah, Blake was there. Blake's B&B one, yep. Mm -hmm. So that was your fifth video? That was, I think, my fourth or my fifth video. And I just started the month before that, knowing that I had to get kind of warmed up for that. Yeah. And we're over 1,000 videos now, 1,000 blogs. And shortly after that, I saw you in my, my state, Georgia, at Shaq's house. Yes, and we will be back in June. You should, you should come by. June 5th through the 9th, we're going to be back at Shaq's building him Shaq 2.0. Okay. So Shaquille O'Neal, uh, <laughs> the interesting people that I get to meet, of course, the biggest man that I've ever met. He has kind of made the family compound. He's got 80 acres down there outside, about a half hour outside of the airport. We put in a quarter million dollar pond and waterfalls for him in the front yard in five days. So, How did he like it? You know, he loves it, but he, you know who really loves it? His mom. Oh, so his wow. mom lives at the house. She's out there every day feeding the fish. So it's just so fun. Shaq comes and goes, but he's a worldwide celebrity. But he loved it enough that he hired the local landscape. He wanted me, the, the house manager wanted me to build a pond in the front. I'm like, yeah, it's not really the best place to do it. Let's build it over here. And then after we left, the landscaper did it. And it, of course, messed it up. He didn't know what he was doing. So we're going back there to fix it. Shaq 2.0 is fixing the landscaping. Landscaper built earthen pond. It doesn't hold water to get it to hold water and look nice. And then the first pond will be in year three. It's looking beautiful. Okay, how do you get connected with Logan Paul, Shaquille O'Neal? How, how did you make these things happen? So Logan Paul bought a house in Encino, California, and one of the first things that he said on his vlog was, I want a pond just like the one I grew up with in Ohio. Mm -hmm. He's another Ohio yeah. guy outside of Cleveland. And literally my phone blew up. You gotta build a Logan Paul pond. I'm like, okay, I've heard of Logan Paul, but I don't like really follow him. I was shocked at the amount of people that followed Logan Paul. So I'm like, okay, so who do I know that knows Logan Paul? And Brian Barczyk, who's in Detroit, who I saw yesterday, who's a reptile guy, I know that he had done some stuff with Logan with his giant snakes. And so I reached out to him. Within 24 hours of Logan announcing that, Logan texted me. And within 48 hours of that text, I was in Encino, California, designing a pond for Logan How did you Paul. get the text, Brian? Brian gave him my number, and Logan texted me. Wow. Yeah. And you were Johnny on the spot. Yeah. And then Shaq was his cousin, D-Mac runs a car wash in Orlando that Shaq owns, and one of our certified Aquascape contractors would get his vehicles washed there, logo it up with fish and you know water splashes and everything, and he goes, what do you do? And they got to talking. So I bet you my cousin Shaq would like one of these, and so that was in Orlando maybe seven, eight years ago. We went out and met at his house in Orlando, but he was already in the process of moving to Atlanta because he's on TNT broadcasting right. with Charles Barkley. and. And so there are a lot of celebrities living in Atlanta now. A lot of people are moving into Atlanta because you can live like a king versus Chicago. The house is there. You don't yeah, get much. It's a, he's got a beautiful But Atlanta, home. you can, these guys have these mega mansions and they're not that, I mean, they're a lot, but they're not as much as other markets. Yeah, he's, he's got a neat house and a compound. He's got a really compound mm -hmm. there. But basically he said, when I get my tree house done by Pete from Treehouse Masters, I want the pond after that. And so a year later, the pond got, or the treehouse got built and we came in and built the pond. And how is all that? From your fifth video at Logan Paul's backyard to now you have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, your YouTube channel's growing. How's all that gone? You know, it just evolves. Everything evolves, right? So I started my lifestyle channel, which is Greg Woodstock the Pond Guy, where I get to travel, visit my certified Oxy's contractors, and they take me out to showcase their projects. And then everybody kept asking, well, how do you build these? And I'm like, well, if I show the construction, that's really not the lifestyle. So that started the Team Aquascape, which is also three days a week now. 
on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. And then people wanted the scientific information, which started the third vlog channel, which is Ed the Pond Professor. So we're seven days a week over three vlog channels, each one kind of dedicated to a specific interest, lifestyle, construction, ecology. Greg, what's your tips to guys that own businesses? Should they be on YouTube, social media? How has that impacted your life? And what about guys that are kind of skeptical about the whole YouTube and social media thing, but they own a business? Well, I mean, you can't really be skeptical about it anymore. It's really where the, where the world is, right? And the best way to start is to just start. You know, you don't, I didn't have a, I didn't have a plan of going out and featuring certified oxygen contractors when I built Logan Paul's Pond. I just knew that I had to get on that platform and it evolved mm -hmm. fairly quickly over focusing on my customers' projects. The best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So mm -hmm. just start, you don't have to have three vlogs a week, but maybe one a month. Mm -hmm. In one a month after a year, you've got, 12? Yeah, there you go. Okay. You got 12. I went to Ohio University, not Ohio State. <laughs> you got 12 videos, and then if you send that to a customer, right, they can now get a little bit of a perspective before you go there. Would you rather be a guy that comes in with a, a portfolio and sits down at the table and first time get to meet the customer, or them and watch three, four, five, or six of your vlogs ahead of That's time good. and get to know who you are, what your customers are like, what your team is like, your personality? It's a whole different selling environment when you can do that. So it's not just the vlogs, it's Instagram, it's Facebook. I don't want to start this stuff. I didn't want to do TikTok. I started TikTok in, it's what, it's November. I started in January. I met like 150, 160,000 people on, on TikTok, wow. but I don't do it. I have a people, I create the content by going out and shooting ponds and doing this, and then I put it into an up folder, and then people that, I've got a 20, just graduated college, maybe 23 year old girl that handles the TikTok stuff for us. So I don't wanna be doing that stuff in terms of like, I'm selling, oh, I gotta be on TikTok, but I know we should be, and so I just get people, put them in place, I get the material, I'm out there visiting the ponds or whatever, but they cut it up, add music, all that stuff. You can easily hire that out. Even if it's just a part-time job, you know, your daughter, your cousin, you know, somebody that's a friend, just pay them a little bit of money per month to do that stuff. And you already making the content. If you're cutting lawns, if you're, if you're creating content, now all you have to do is have someone put it together and put it up for you. I'd like to switch gears and talk about how you built your team, Greg, because 31 years in business, you, you know, you live on the other side of the country than your businesses. Mm -hmm. And everyone's doing their job. How, how did you build that foundation where people are passionate about your business? And that's a good word, passionate, because they are passionate because we hire for attitude, we train for aptitude, right? So we got people that are gonna be enthusiastic about things. Um, I've always wondered how people sell toilet seats or electrical cable. You know, we have at least have a fun medium with turtles and fish and frogs. But the number one way that I was able to grow my team was hire for attitude, train for aptitude, and then give people a rope and let them either climb or hang themselves. Most people by nature will hang themselves, but you'll get a few people that climb and over years you can build a team of 130 people that are passionate about what they do and that are better than you. That's another thing too, I think a lot of times, and I just talked about this on stage, mm -hmm. people are trying to find someone that's just like them to work in their business. The last person that I want at Aquascape is someone just like me. Talk about doubling my problems, mm -hmm. tripling my problems, right? So I hire the opposite, hire people that have uh, the right attitude mm -hmm. and then are pretty good at what they're doing and then eventually if you get out of their way, can be eventually better than you. And that's how you grow a business. Let, let's dial this thing all the way back because you have 130 employees. Yes. A lot of guys that are listening to our show, they, they just have one crew of, of a lawn care business. Yeah. And it might be three people. And the money's tight and they're trying to justify because they got new customers wanting them to come mow edge, trim, blow, do their landscaping. But they're nervous. If I had that second crew, then what if someone quits and, and the thing's all going to implode? So getting the 130 seems astronomical. How do you get from one crew to starting to build that team and what caution should you have as you try to scale? Well, here's one of the things that I would say is, first of all, you gotta get out of the people's way. You gotta give them a rope, like I just said, and let them, and people are trying to find someone that is just like them. It's the wrong thing to do. You gotta find someone that has a good attitude right? Because attitude will determine your altitude. And then start adding services. So don't go out there and just stop doing something. If, you, if you're a mow and blow guy, then start saying, hey, Mrs. Jones, this would be a perfect place you know, to put in a, a decorative fountainscape or something. Or I can add irrigation so you don't have to, I see you out here watering. It's the relationship. And then that's how you can build up your company over time. So you might, you might start off at doing lawn maintenance, but you might end up being an irrigation, a hardscape or a water feature guy or, or nightscaping by adding services to your existing clientele. And so for me, because they already have a relationship with them, would, they, would you rather, would a person rather buy from someone they don't know or someone that's already been out there every single week cutting their lawns? So you have a relationship with the customer so you can add services. And then the key to this, Paul, is that that will allow you to grow your people. So people that want to climb and get higher up, there's more opportunities for them to grow versus, hey, if you got a winner, and after a season or two of cutting lawns, he wants to go to the next level. Where do you let him go mm -hmm. if you don't have additional services that you can offer? So it's a good way to keep teammates 
is by giving them more opportunities to grow, and then they can become the champion of that lighting or pondscaping or whatever. That's so good. Well, I'm curious. You've been at Logan Paul's house, Shaquille O'Neal's house. What's your best story, Greg? It, it could be Logan, Shaq, or someone else. You, you've got to hang out with some of the oh. most famous people on the planet at their homes. What, what's your greatest story that you, you could know, publicly share? Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> do I have to keep it, keep it PG? I got a pretty good one with Shaq, but I don't think that would be good out here for all audiences. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. Probably my favorite story is we had a TV show called Nat Geo, uh, Nat Geo Wild called Pond Stars. I didn't pick the name, Pond Stars on Nat Geo Wild. And I worked really hard to get that show and then we only had one season and six episodes. It was scripted, it was not me at all, it was not our company at all. And I was very depressed about that, but that really created the opportunity because I saw how that business worked of making something real, really reality TV, which is just raw and unscripted, which is YouTube and social media. But my best story from that was you would think that that was a defeat, but I learned a lot about myself and what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. But we had one customer to this day, our biggest customer ever came from that show. It was a guy who was a developer down in Colombia, South America, Villa Vicencio, Colombia, that was a big fan of Pond Stars on Nat Geo Wild, the big nature guy. And he flew to Chicago, which I'm like, why are we meeting with this guy from Colombia? We're not going to go to Colombia and build a water feature. And he hired us for a $2.7 million project, which to date is the largest water feature we've ever built down in Columbia. South America at his brand new shopping mall. Wow, congratulations, Greg. That's really cool. Well, they just let out for the break here, so we'll kind of wrap things up. How can people connect with you, Greg, on social media? The Pond Guy, Team Aquascape, on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. And once again, the greatest satisfaction in life is helping someone else reach their fullest potential. Thanks for allowing right, me to get I have one more, one more question. Okay. Personal question. Yeah. I, I build out Instagram, the podcast, yeah. TikTok. Yeah. I'm wanna, I want to get YouTube up and popping in 2023. That's like my, my goal for 2023. What's some tips, like the bite the elephant? I'm, I'm overwhelmed. You create the content by hiring a local guy, film guy or whatever that you're uh -huh. going to do and then outsource it to like an Upwork.com. You can go to Upwork.com. You can watch people's sizzle reels. Find someone that can, and you know, you edit one or two on your own, then you get other people to edit it. Once again, work on your business, not in your business. So outsource the editing of your material to, I got guys in, the, I got a guy in the Philippines, I got a guy in Romania, and I got two guys in India, and one guy in America that do all my outs outsource all the editing. Cool. Well, I really appreciate the tips. It's good seeing you again, Greg. Go Buckeyes. Go Bucks. They, I, I think they might win it all this year. If, if they can get their run offense going, I think we got a good shot. When's the other wide receiver come back? Jackson Smith and Jigba. Every day. I'm hoping he's here today. I'm going back. I'm recording the game right now. Okay. Because they keep saying he's coming back and he hasn't I know. come back. But Hamstring. Marvin Harrison Jr., this guy is... Best receiver in the country. Yeah, for sure. So go Buckeyes. Go Bucks.